Hi everybody and welcome to another video brought to you by plcgurus.net. So you're watching along or following along in our uh, PID or Control Logics PID Essentials video series and we are in the second installment now so if you haven't watched the first one I do recommend that you go over and do that first. So today what I wanted to do is just take a few minutes here just to go over some of the setup, okay? So my intent for this video series is really to, to maximize the flexibility. So if you have access to real physical IO hardware, that's gonna work for you. If you don't have access to real physical IO hardware, no problem, as long as you have access to the various software packages, which I'll get into in a minute, um, we'll be able to simulate the entire process uh, completely. And I'm actually going to be showing you the simulated version, okay? But if you have the real hardware, like I say, it's always nice to have real hardware, wire it up, um, you get that tactile learning, okay? So if you are using real hardware, and what I am going to do in, this, in the software is model this physical rack layout, okay? So you can see here I have a 10 slat chassis, and here are the various I.O. modules that I'm going to configure, and I'm doing the finger quotes uh, here behind the mic, um, configure in the software, okay? Uh, so in slot zero, I'm just gonna go with a, a 1756L61, okay, right here. And then, of course, we're gonna have an Ethernet bridge module in slot one. Then I'm gonna go ahead and stick in a 1756IB16, so this is our DC 16-point uh, input module. Then over in slot number three here, I'm going to have an analog input module, an isol isolated six channel analog input module. And then beside that in slot number four, I'm going to have a combination current voltage uh, analog output module. And then finally in slot five, I'm gonna go ahead and add in an OW16i, which is a 16 point isolated relay output module. Okay, so that is the rack setup. Again, finger quotes that I'm going to be uh, simulating or emulating in our controller as we move along in this uh, PID uh, series here. Okay, great. So, next I wanna just cover over very quickly the actual physical I.O. Uh, that we are going to have or simulate, okay? So th again, this is just the physical I.O. Um, we are going through the process of building the PID loop, uh, create uh, various internal tags, but I wanted to list here just the actual physical I.O. So if you are wiring uh, these up, you can follow along and wire to these inputs and outputs. Or if you're following the simulation, I am actually simulating driving these inputs and outputs. And again, we'll get to that in the next slide or so. Okay, so we're gonna have a stop push button. We're gonna have a start push button to start and stop the process. We're gonna have a hand auto selector switch. So in hand mode, and I'll explain the modes a little bit more clearly in the next slide, but we're gonna have a hand auto uh, selector switch, okay? And then we're gonna have to have a mechanism to simulate our external disturbance. And in this case, because we're, we're modeling a steam control temperature process, we are going to be um, calling it temp dist or a temperature disturbance. So this is a way for us to inject an external disturbance into our process. And if it's not clear right now, don't worry, it will be by the end of the series, I guarantee you. Um, and then we're gonna have just some simple pilot lights to say that the process is running and the process is stopped. Okay, so let's go ahead and carry on. All right, so just a little bit about mode control. I just wanna talk about this uh, very briefly. So I'm just gonna read from the slide, so bear with me. So mode control concept. So typically process, process will have three modes of operation. Off, hand or manual mode, and auto. Those are the most common ones, okay? So the off mode is generally defined as the process safe mode, where the PID output or CV, and again, this will become clear soon, will be driven to its safe position. Typically, 0%, um, especially in the case of a steam or a temperature control valve, like with the process we're gonna model. So in a safe condition for us when the process is stopped is we're going to completely close off that steam valve or drive it to 0%, okay, it's fully closed. So off mode can be entered by either pressing the stop button or the off position 
on the hand auto selector if we have one okay if we don't have one the and in, in the case that we're going to be setting up here i have a two position so it's just going to be hand or auto the process stop push button is going to put us in the safe mode okay so now the next two are very important so the hand or manual mode is defined as open loop control mode okay so this means that we have the ability as the operator to take direct control over the steam valve position so the, typically this would be done via an hmi or something like that where the the stationary engineer or or operator of the process could go over and say you know what i want to open this valve to 50 percent to start heating up my process so maybe it's he's coming in from after a weekend to start up the process okay so in hand mode we have direct control over the output to the valve and it completely ignores the feedback loop and again i'm just putting this out there it'll be very very clear and the nice thing about the videos is you can always refer back okay so auto mode is defined as closed loop control mode so in this mode the pid controller has direct control over the output cv and ultimately the position of the steam valve. So remember we looked at the dependent form algorithm that we're going to be implementing in our PID controller. And like I said, it's going to take the air, push it through the PID dependent form algorithm and determine what the next value of the output CV is going to be. And it looks at the feedback loop to do that, okay? So those are the three basic modes. And of course these two for us are gonna be very important, of course, when we stop the process, we should be driving the valve fully closed. That is gonna be considered our safe position. Okay, great. So, let's talk about software. All right, so to simulate a complete PID loop, we're going to be making use of a few different Rockwell packages here, okay? So you're going to need to have Studio 5000 version 23 or later, okay? You're going to need to have Studio 5000 Logic Emulate if you want to follow along exactly the way I'm doing it in the video series here. Again, if you have physical hardware, it's not as critical. Um, but if you want to make use of the uh, simulation panel I have, uh, the emulator package, then these are what you're going to need. So for the Factory Talk View Studio, you're going to need version 6.10 or later. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide a complete uh, package for you on PI, um, sorry, on plcgurus.net. And it's going to include the PID simulator template, which is going to be the base file that we're going to be working with. And then as well, the PID simpanel.apa, which is an archive file that you'll be able to double click, install on your machine, and you will have full access to this simulation panel and again i'll put a link to it in the comment section below um, you can head over to plcgurus.net download your simulation uh, package and you'll be able to start exactly where i'm going to start probably in the next video okay so what i wanted to do is just again just review quickly the process that we are going to be modeling in the controller and we looked at this image in the last um, video and it, it does a fairly good job of um, giving us a pictorial view of the process we're modeling. So we have a process vessel with a process liquid. We have a thermocouple uh, feedback going into our temperature indicator controller, which in this case is going to be actually our Control Logics PID controller. And then via way of the steam valve here, we are going to either add or subtract steam on a continual basis in order to main set point, okay? And again, we're just ignoring this motor agitator. We don't need it in our simple model here. Okay, and again, if you wanna get some reading ahead, like I say, I'm spoon feeding you stuff and I'm going to continue to do that as we work through this video series. But if you wanna do a little reading ahead, I do highly recommend that you do and you head over to this link here. Okay, you'll find it right on plcgurus.net. Okay, and lastly, I do want to just review quickly the dependent form uh, PID equation that we're going to be working with. Uh, and remember, on a reverse acting process, the error that shows up in the um, algorithm here 
is the set point minus the process variable or process value, okay? Just so it's clear where that error or how that error is determined. And there, in terms of gains that we're gonna have the ability to adjust is the complete PID equation in terms of the gain. So I don't know which one you prefer. I, I think it's, th this one might look simpler once we actually get into the, um, the Control Logics PID controller. So I promise we're gonna get over to the programming now, but I wanted to put this video in before we did that, um, just because there's a few things we're gonna to need to know and need to have in order to get going and working together through this. So I hope you found this video informative. Please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. And I encourage you to head on over to plcgurus.net and become an active member in our community. Like I say, we are the fastest growing, or the internet's fastest growing community of professional engineers, technicians, and technologists. So head on over, registration's free, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.